Welcome to the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast, where our mission is to help you learn and grow by sharing the tips, ideas, tricks, and more that we learn from speaking with top producing real estate agents around the country every single day. I'm Matt Benelli here with Ninja Coaching founder and owner Garrett Fry. And although we focus a lot on real estate, this podcast is not just for real estate agents. It is for anyone who is looking to better their business and increase their income per hour in order to enjoy all of the things that life has to offer. So prepare to take in a lot of value that you can put into action in your business and your life. Enjoy the show. Well, do you know your people? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone, and welcome to another exciting episode of Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast. Garrett and I were chatting this morning, and this is a topic that we actually talk about a lot in coaching, but I'm actually surprised, Garrett, that we haven't talked about this on the podcast yet because this is so much fun, and this really goes into how well do you know the people that you're working with, how well do you know the people in your sphere, and what tools are you using to help you understand who those people are so that you know the best about them so that you can serve them in the best way? So I'm excited to dive into this topic. Good morning, Gary. Yeah, yeah good morning, Matt. I'm excited to, to dive into it also. And I think it's funny, just so you guys know how well-structured Matt and I are, are with the podcast, topics like the one we're going to discuss today, we have to sit there and go, we had to have talked about this. Like, did we talk about? I think we might. No, I don't think we did. Oh my gosh, it's just great. Going through the list of things, like, wait, did we talk about this somewhere? It's like, nope, nope, no episode on this one. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you want to call it out, Matt? Sure. We're talking about something that was developed in 1983 really for large corporations and salespeople who are who are calling on big companies. And this was developed by Harvey McKay, and it's called the McKay 66. So I have used this, Matt, so many times with the people that I coach, where we start to step back where they're going like, oh, yeah, yeah, I've got so many people in my database. And oh, yeah, yeah, I've got so many people in my sphere of influence. And I start to really question them and say, well, how well do you really know them? how well do you really know who your people are? Because there is a difference of knowing people and really knowing people. The McKay 66 for me has always been like, um, it's like a thermometer. <laughs> it's like a way that I could sit there and go, hmm, I thought I knew these people, but I really don't. <laughs> like, I really know <laughs> nothing about them. And then there's some that I'm like, oh my gosh. And it's funny when you start putting the information in, you start to realize why you have the relationship that you have. You know, we hear people mad all the time that come to us and say, you know, I have such a hard time picking up the phone and calling certain people. And I have such a hard time reaching out to people. I will tell you when you guys are done listening to this, if you want to go and experiment with your database, with what we're going to share with you, you will understand very quickly why it's hard for you to pick up the phone and call certain people. It'll be clear as day. Yeah, definitely. And I think what's funny about this McKay 66, which is 66 questions about your customers um, as they identify it, is that it kind of makes you feel really bad <laughs> when you're going through it. I was going through this and I was like, hmm, I don't know that about you, Garrett. <laughs> Man, I'm really I, not funny. paying attention. I, I actually have everyone on you. I, I, every one of these is filled out. I know everyone. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, but I think it's really important, Matt. You already pointed out, but we need to point out again that this was developed for big companies doing business with big companies. Like when I always think about this, I think about my father-in-law, who was a vice president for a packaging and paper company. And I think about all the deals that he was always flying around the United States and securing with Caterpillar, uh, like the big manufacturing, like big heavy equipment company or BMW. There was always a liaison in those companies that was his contact person that he would have to cut the deal with. He would have to go in there and say, okay, here's our products. Here's how we're going to package this for you. And here's what we can offer. That company was always interviewing the three other packaging companies to say who can give us the best deal and who can also provide the best product. And they had to make a business decision based on it. This is the kind of stuff that like my father-in-law would go, I got to figure out 
every piece of this about the guy who works at BMW. So when I walk in there, I can joke with him about the right stuff. I can take care of him in the right way. I can, you know, talk to him about what it's like to have kids because that guy has kids because I know it and I know they're this certain age. Like that's the level that this thing was developed as because that wins you deals. It will win big, you big the deals. Yeah. Oh, big, big, big deals being able to walk in with somebody's favorite brand of scotch. I mean, like, hey. I got this for you. I hope everything's going well. And yeah, and you celebrate. Like I saw, I heard you had the big win yesterday and be able to celebrate with people about the things that really are important to them or make them happy. Like those are the opportunities when you know the right stuff. So what our thought was today is we could go down some of these and talk about what is the power of knowing some of these pieces of information and how do you go about gathering some of this information? Because I've done this with people too, and they go like, "So, so how do I how do I gather it?" Like, you know, and they make it really mechanical and really weird. I'm like, "Stop trying to make this weird. Like, this is stuff that happens with time. You're not going to figure all this stuff out in one week. It ain't going to happen." Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, it's not time. something you're going to like put this entire uh, profile into a questionnaire and say, "Hi, would you mind please filling this out so I know more information about you." There are things that can go into a questionnaire, absolutely, but not all this stuff. No. Now, and also, so like talk about overcomplicating. I had somebody one time, I shared this list with them. This is years back. Like I went back when I was first starting coaching because I remember where I was sitting when they told me it because I remember lo looking around the room thinking about where would I keep this filing cabinet. They literally made, it went to like Office Depot, bought an entire cabinet for the McKay 66 and made like 300 folders. It's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> that every folder had a name on the top of it and the McKay 66 stuck inside of it. And they're like, I'm just going to start gathering all the information, all my people. I'm going to have this incredible database of all this information. And part of me is going like, that's what your CRM is for. Like, please don't make something that you have to manually go through and pull out the piece of paper when you need to know this information. But on some level... It was brilliant. Oh, yeah. Well, and I will say, in terms of before we dive into the specific things, if you're looking for a place to put this information, it doesn't even have to be super complicated with custom fields in your CRM. This can be in your Google Contacts. Every, every like Google Contacts or Outlook, you have the notes section. Just fill up the notes section, and then it carries over into your phone, and you just pull up the contact, and you scroll down, and there's where you have stuff. Um, I've used that. For basic information, I used to put like Ford in there and just like F-O-R-D and then put interesting things I know about those people in the notes. Very helpful. And this is where that can live for you. I've, I've always put it in the notes. And, and the only time I will classify it deeper, if it's a really big thing in their life, then it might get a category or a tag around it. But for the most part, it just it just goes in there as information that's important for me to know about them. So when I communicate with them, I can communicate with them on the level that's going to be best for them. Yeah. All right. Do you want to run down to this thing and pick some stuff out? Let's do it. Let's All do right. it. All right. I'm going to go first because it starts... I want to just kind of give people... It starts off really simple. Like number one is name. <laughs> okay. Like we're not... <laughs> points for answering that one. <laughs> we got to be able to put their name on this thing. Uh, but it also goes with nickname. And Matt and I were joking about the whole nickname thing before we got into recording this morning. But, you know, it's, the funny thing about nickname is I, I used to take a lot of these questions that we're going to talk about here. And it was actually part of my buyer questionnaire when I would go and present my, give my buyer's packet, do the 10-step uh, buyer's process. I actually had a questionnaire that was about them on there. And one of the questions was, do you have a nickname? had their name and do you have a nickname? And what I found is, is that one, not everybody has a nickname. Uh, second is, is that when somebody does have a nickname, it's an interesting way to connect with them. And I remember looking at the forum one time when I was sitting at the, the dining room table, I was just talking with the wife. We're looking around the house and I'm gathering information on it. And I look at the nickname and it says uh, for the, her husband and it says Homer. And I asked her, I said, Homer? I'm like, is your, is your husband's nickname really Homer? And she goes, yep. And all of a sudden this truck pulls in the driveway. This guy gets out and I, I swear to you, he is the image that they use to draw Homer Simpson. <laughs> 
<laughs> hairline, incredible. body type, stubble on his face. Like, I'm like, and it makes sense. Well, he walked in the house and I start talking to him for a second. And I said, okay, I'm like, I have to, I have to ask, is it okay if I call you Homer? He goes, all my friends do. He goes, yeah, totally, man. Call me Homer. I was like, all right, <laughs> let's do it. They were, they were long-term customers. And I knew all kinds of little stuff. But one of the fun things is that I would call him and be like, Homer, what's going on? And it just brought us to a different level for that little simple thing that he said, all my friends do. It allowed me to fall into a new category with them because I could be on that level with them. I wasn't just sitting there going, hi, Ed, how's it going? Garrett Fry calling. How you doing, man? I got a chance to kind of go into a different level here. So I want to kind of start on that. Like we're still on number one, just so everybody knows. This is name and nickname. And just knowing that about people, you can unlock all, uh, just a different level of the relationship. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, and sometimes this basic information can be very powerful. Like, I mean, the rest of this first category of the customer, you have company name, address, home address, um, phone numbers. What's not on here is email. <laughs> Wasn't created yet. It's just um, an old form. <laughs> but one thing I like on here, birth date. Okay, birthdays we know that, but where did they? Where were they born, and where did they grow up? Their hometown. I think that's interesting information because you can connect with people on that in a in a deep way as well. Oh gosh, the place that they were born in home hometowns a fun one for me. And I actually asked this question to a lot of people just in random. Well, since I've ever known about the McKay sixty six, I find it's fun to go. Did you grow up here or were you born somewhere else? And if they were born somewhere else, then it opens up a whole bunch of doors about how did you get to Reading? What what was that path? And all of a sudden you're learning about this journey from where they went to college to, you know, they went and traveled abroad for a while and then they met their spouse and their spouse had family here and now they're back in Reading. Oh my gosh, that's awesome. I didn't realize that that was your journey, but it came across of me just wanting to figure out what their hometown was. Yeah, I mean, there's so many great conversations that can come from that. Uh, just kind of exploring people's backgrounds because people have this nostalgia, particularly when you get into like, where did you attend high school? How was high school? You know, did you move around a lot? You know, you'll sometimes you'll find, and I found this with certain customers, their their parents were in the military and they moved every two years, and so they didn't have a normal high school experience, quote unquote, normal high school experience. You know, and then what was their college years like? Did they go to college? Um, one of the interesting questions that I have here that's on here, number 11, is if the customer didn't attend college, is he or she sensitive about it? And that's that's a really yeah. interesting thing because you can learn a lot about somebody's personality by just kind of seeing if you can sense. Now, obviously, you're not going to say, so are you sensitive about not going to college or what? <laughs> not having that degree is kind of a bummer right now, huh? <laughs> probably not a question you're going to ask, but people do have different approaches on that. And I think that's just interesting information to have because it tells you kind of where your boundary lines are. Also, I think it helps you prevent foot and mouth syndrome because I think a lot of times we just assume people are of a certain way or just kind of agree with certain, quote, common things out there. And we can end up putting our foot in our mouth real quick, which can oh, yeah. ruin a relationship too. So I think a lot of this is also preventative to protect the relationship as you guys move forward. That is a really strong point, Matt, that needs to like really be understood is that this is really exactly what you just said. This is a way one to connect with people, but it's also a way for you not to put your foot in your mouth. And I've done it. I have blown coaching relationships up because, and we'll go, it comes up farther down the list here, but because I did not take the proper notes about somebody that had gone through, uh, become, you know, basically having trouble with alcohol and being a part of AA and all that. And I made a joke that went along those lines and talked about, you know, a system you could use to like build a business around alcohol. And I strongly, strongly, strongly offended this person to the point that it kind of ruined our relationship. And it wasn't done in a mean way. It wasn't done in anything bad. I wasn't going outside the box, but it was bringing up a lot of painful stuff that I was not aware of. And I should have known it. I should have had it in my notes. It should have been something that I should have said, this is something don't ever go there with them because I knew it. And as it was coming out of my mouth, I was going, you know those moments when you're talking? This happens to me all the time. You're talking and that little voice in the back of your head goes, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like, don't just stop right here. 
Do, does that happen to you, Matt, or is that just me? Oh, yeah. No, it happens. It happens. <laughs> Sometimes I wish the voice was a little louder about it because all of a sudden I'm like, why didn't you scream at me? <laughs> it's like watching a car accident and you're like, ah, I can't look away. It's like, that's that's the moment. <laughs> that's that piece. And this is, allows you to be careful about it. Now, I'm, you skipped over one that I was you know chuckling about, which was number six, which was height and weight. But it does say approximate oh, yeah. after it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Can you imagine? So what are you, like 210, 220? <laughs> again just just approximate See people's like, like the color go out of their face like <gasps> yeah age <laughs> excuse me would you mind stepping on this scale over here before we get get started listing your house <laughs> yeah yeah the age part i'm guessing you're 65 oh 45 oh okay thanks i'll take note of that well um, i think no, that's important. I mean, the questions like that, people are like, well, why why should I write that down? Why should I be aware of that? Well, because if if you want to get a visualization of your clients before you go in and talk to them again, or before you check in on an annual real estate review, let's say, it's easy to look at stats like that and recall what they look like in your in your opinion. I mean, now we have Facebook and everything. You can just if you're friends with them, go on there and look at some recent photos to kind of just get in that like so that you have this visualization of standing in front of somebody versus just calling a random voice on the phone. I think I think that's where that becomes helpful. Yeah, this is where if again if this is somebody that like again if this is think about big business when this was created, if you met somebody one time and you had to have a meeting with them and you knew you were going to come back in a month and meet with them again, you'd probably walk out of there going like, "Okay, he was you know, 5 foot 10, approximately weighed, you know, 250 pounds." And just that little bit of information alone there, like if I wanted to add a little bit more to it, it might just be like, okay, I've kind of got a visual of who this guy is. Yeah. Exactly. So, okay, let's move along. I just love that it said approximate because again, these are not things like, just because it's a question on here doesn't mean you have to ask it. It's more of like building information about who the person is. Yeah, like finding, yeah, seeing if you can discover this stuff. Like for number 12 here, military service and what rank were they discharged at? I mean, you'll you'll pretty much know if people served in the military, because um, it's something that they should be very proud of, in my opinion. But sometimes you don't know. Like, if you saw my wife, you would have no idea that she did ROTC in college and was in the National Guard. No idea. Does that matter? Probably not. But if you find the information, could be good information to have. Because if you're a veteran and you are able to connect with another veteran, I mean, that's that's a strong thing. One of the people I coach down in Florida, Andrew Michael, he goes by the veterans agent and he does fantastic with other veterans and they love talking about the service and the Marine Corps and things like that. So it can, it can really help you connect with people. Well, and again, when you're looking for commonalities and like interests, if you or yourself, you know, or a spouse of your, like, if I was finding this information out, I'm like, oh my gosh, like my wife did ROTC. Like I didn't realize Jen did ROTC. No, Sarah did not. I'm making up stories. Sarah did not do ROTC. <laughs> but that those are those opportunities that it just in gathering that information that you would have never thought was important. Those are those things that as you start to figure that out, you know, it really builds a strong relationship. What I found with the military service, so I have no military background. I highly respect the people that, you know, give that service to the military, but I don't have a military background. I don't even know a lot of times what questions to ask. And when I read this part of uh, number 12 on the uh, McKay, what it allowed me to do was all of a sudden go like, oh, there's actual more questions to ask here. Like, what part of the military were you with? Like, I, I did. I, I just would put military. Oh, they've done military. But no, there's so many different levels. And that allowed me then to go and learn more, ask more questions, go deeper down. So again, it's all about oh, yeah. learning what these what, people what are about. Brand, how long? When was your service? I mean, there's so many. I mean, we can probably go real far on that one too. And I think it's good to have that on there for also helping people, Garrett, like us. I didn't serve in the military either. You know, that's something that maybe I wouldn't think of when I'm getting to know somebody as if like, that's an important question that I should know. And having these things listed out here, and we're going to find some other fun ones on here too, where it's like, I'd never thought of trying to find out that information, but that is such good information to have. Yeah. Yep. So next section here, family. Pretty pretty standard questions in this one, you know, spouse, occupation of the spouse, their education. Although when you're doing this for your customers, I feel like this is, you know, when when set up in this big business format, like you're talking to 
one person, the person that you need to negotiate with. Whereas here in real estate, this is kind of all combined back up at the top too, I think. I think you can have a separate profile on each spouse and then maybe have more information about the children. Yes. In big picture with this thing too, I've, had, I've seen... Well, I used to have a friend uh, that I used to work with and teach with that he turned this thing into what he called his 40, 40 is what it was. It was the real estate 40. And it would like took a lot of these questions out that really weren't necessary. So if you want to do that to simplify this thing down a little bit can totally be done. Very easily yeah. be done. I, so I, I'm, I'm like, we can go down this thing one by one. I kind of want to jump around to some questions that light me up. Do you have one on there that sticks out to you right now that you want to jump on? Well, one thing that I um, I find interesting because there's the business background, which is there's a lot of stuff in here that I think is good for like if you're doing B2B stuff. But something that I think is really interesting to know is question 33. Does the customer Dude, that think that was of my question? Ah! <laughs> Why would you do that? That was the one I was going to do. All right. Had, I'm going to go find another no one. You can talk about that one. We were in tune there. You're sending out those vibes, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I felt them come through the sound waves. Oh, rude. Go. You talk about it now. Go. All right. All right. Yep. Yeah, I got it now. I called it out. You You gave me the opportunity to do this. So just I know. I know. I'm going. Keep going. <laughs> so does the customer think of the present or the future? And I would add unto that or the past. And what, now this is really kind of asking the question when it comes to their to business, but I would go into like the, their personality. Are they a future thinking person? Are they in the present moment? Or are they always focusing on what's happened? If you are thinking about how does that relate to their job too, that could help you understand what real estate changes might be coming about, right? It's very important to know because it can also help you in terms of how you discuss things with people. Because if you have a customer that's always thinking about the past, and you're always talking about the future, you could be freaking them out. Because they're just like, I'm just, I'm still trying to get over what happened yesterday. And you're talking about next week. I, what? Now, maybe it's not that simple, but. Well, Garrett, I think also, I think also. You're one too. Tell me. <laughs> well, I think, well, again, I was, I was, you literally you took the words out of my mouth about the past needs to be in there also. But the thing that struck me about this one is that, you know, when we look at the forward questions, family, occupation, recreation, and dreams. When you know somebody who's very futuristic or that's where their brain is always in is in the future, they are great people to ask dream questions to. To sit back and say, what are your plans for the future? What do you guys got planned for summer coming up? You know, if you could look into the next five years, where do you guys see yourselves at? Uh, they're great questions to have over a beer. You know, if you could take the next five years of all the travel you guys want to do, what's the top 10 places that you want to travel to? When you have a futuristic person that you can pinpoint on that, it allows you to say, okay, this is somebody I can really go deep with dream questions on and get a really good feedback on. Oh, yeah. Oh, man, I love talking about dreams. Like the, when you get into the D category and you can understand that stuff about people, you will always have a reason to call people. Yeah. Always. Like I, I know that if I'm like at a loss of, well, I should call Garrett, what should I talk about? I know. I'll call Garrett and talk to him about Porsches. It's yeah. going to happen. It'll be a great conversation. And that's the type of stuff that you can determine from people who are future. And I think everybody has a little sense of that. Even if they're dominant past thinkers, which I, I will throw out a caution flag, if they're dominant past, we're gonna, you're going to have a challenging relationship in getting them to move forward with their real estate transactions. But everybody has some dreams. And if you could be the one to help them unlock some of that stuff too, you could also potentially help them you know, change their lives a little bit, which is pretty cool too. Yep. It's good to be that catalyst that can drive that. All right. I got my next, I, no, I'm going to do two, Matt, because you stole the other one from me. I'm going to do two <laughs> here, but I think they go back okay. to back. Okay. So politically active and what party are they involved with and religion? Yes. These are, these are two that always fascinate me on this list because, you know, in, and this is, depends on where you are in the United States or in the world about how quickly you go to, so we're like, what religion are you? Like there's some areas that that's very, very common and very easy to ask right up front. It's like, where do you go to church? And then there's some places that you just, you don't go there. Uh, same thing with, you know, the political side. There's some areas in our country that it's very, very, very okay to lead with the political side. You know, so where do you stand? Uh, my daughter just recently went over to her new boyfriend's house and the dad sat her down and said, so where do you stand on the impeachment? 
<laughs> and so my daughter got in the car and That's she goes powerful stuff for a 15 year old <laughs> she goes well that was fun i was like what happened she starts like loading the questions on me i'm like oh you got like full-blown interrogated like that's pretty awesome you know usually most people do not lead with those questions they don't step but oh my gosh is it important so that talk about foot and mouth oh my this is the stuff that if you can figure it out through the little nuances, what they talk about, what they say, little things they drop, hints here and there, and you go, oh, that's where they stand. All right, let's make note of that. It's really important for future conversations when there's things happening online like what recently just happened. There are some people that you might want to call and be like, oh my gosh, what in the world just went down? And there's some people you might want to call and celebrate with or maybe just be quiet about it to share your own opinions and just say, I'm not going to go there. But it's so important that you know who you can have those conversations with and who you can't, because you can alienate someone like in a heartbeat oh, if you yeah. take the wrong, wrong approach. Yeah. And I think it's, it's really important to be very, very objective when you're approaching these categories of determining who, who are these people that you're working with? Because as, I mean, I think, I hope as a real estate agent, and maybe not. Some people might have like, well, I only want to work with this part, people in this party, or people in this party, and and I guess that's fine. We could that could be a niche, but I think most people just want to work with as many people as possible because I feel like these are things that don't ultimately define who we are in our entirety, and we can always find other things to get along with people on. But it's nice to know what landmines we don't want to step on. Um, Could you imagine if you formulated your entire marketing campaign for real estate? around working with people from a certain political party. Oh my God. <laughs> Actually, I bet there's somebody totally out done. there who does. I, I bet been, there's oh, somebody it's, who It's does. totally been done. It's, it, I guarantee you it's been done. Well, especially now in an election season or election year, you have, I'm sure there's tons of people posting, reposting. I've seen it. You know, you see, so you get, you get to know who, what side people are on, which I think is fine too, by the way, don't be afraid to share your opinions. As long as you're a good human being, you're going to be fine. So that's I think like so <laughs> so going to the religion side of it though like I find like w I love getting to know people's religions not because like I care one way or the other I like actually engaging with them on the traditions of their religion yeah and Usually bringing it up that they're passionate about yeah like and and sometimes I'm funny about it like yeah I I've got a good friend who's Jewish and I love love bringing up dreidels and menorahs because it, and he, and I'm like, is it time yet? Like, when, when do you break that stuff out? Like, and he knows, he knows that I'm not, he knows that it's not my tradition, <laughs> but he laughs and we joke and it's funny about it. And it's like, all right, we're, we, we, we get to, it builds that strong relationship because I know what his special traditions are. And I know that it's not just a religion that he just goes, yeah, I'm Jewish. He, it's very much a part of his life. It's part of his kid's life. It's part, it's not just, you know, fluff in their world, which then you can engage with them on. But you only know if you pay attention and you listen and you get it down. Yeah, 100%. 100%. And I, I think it's important to know that kind of stuff, for sure. Garrett, there's a uh, two questions under this too. I mean, this whole category of special interest is full of good stuff, but what highly confidential sensitive items are not to be discussed with the customer? Like that's important to know as well. And then also on what subjects outside of kind of the normal stuff does the customer have very strong feelings about because there could be some <laughs> i was sitting at my neighbor's house the other day he says that he has a little bit of ocd and you know here comes the neighbor driving down the lane the uh, the wrong way because it's a shorter distance to their garage and he's like oh that bothers me so much and i was like oh okay Good to know. Don't drive down the lane the wrong way. Otherwise, there might be problems. I mean, these are little things that seem strange, but I'm like, there's there was really strong feelings there. And even though that's probably not the scope of what they're looking for in this category, I put that in there. <laughs> See, again, this is stuff that I look at. I'm like, you can have fun with this too. I have a friend who has that. And it's funny because like we'll sit to lunch and like I'll flip up the corner of the tablecloth on the table and she instantly has to fix it. I she'll look away. <laughs> I flip it back up. <laughs> you watch her go through like a mode of like, so again, if you learn this stuff about people, you can also exploit it and have fun with it and uh, either drive well, them crazy. You know or... that you can. 
right? Yeah. I mean, that's where you know, like, hey, this is something this person has, and can I have fun with this? Or no, can I not have fun with this? And then you just make that check mark. And usually you'll lodge that back in your brain so you make the right decisions in the moment. But <laughs> yeah, I know exactly when I've crossed the line and I've gone too far with the tablecloth tablecloth game. Like, believe me, like I, she warns me. But that's you know, that's the funny stuff that as you get to know your people, you can really have fun with them. Oh yeah. But no you problem. mentioned like things not to be discussed. Like for me, the experience that I shared a little bit ago, that was AA. Doesn't need to go there. Now I have another client that I that I work with right now that she's an AA also. And she, you know, she has a past. She didn't she has no problems with it at all. We can have conversations about it. She'll come out and have, you know, we can have a beer. She'll have a, a you know, I think a iced tea or something. I forget what she had last time she's out with us. But it does not bother her at all. She has no qualms about it. We can go and I can, and this is important. I can go out for her with lunch and I can order a beer. And it doesn't bother her. Where there's others that you just don't go there. Oh, yeah. It's very important to know that stuff. And I've been in very similar situations. And I think if we all think hard enough, we all have. Because um, we, I mean, we all know somebody who's struggled with this and has had challenges. And I think it can be a very sensitive subject. And some sometimes people don't want to talk about it. Sometimes people want to champion it and share their story and talk about it more so that they can impact others with it as well. And I think you just have to know those boundaries. So can I pick, can I pick one now again? Yeah. Go into this next section. I like this next section. It's a fun one. Are we looking at lifestyle? Yeah. Okay. So, okay. So this, I'm going to use somebody that I have in my personal life too, again here, but like, so when talks about favorite places for lunch or favorite items on the menu, again, important stuff to know about people. Like I know I'm going to use my friend, Bob, Bob likes like a burger with like nothing on it. Like think of it, think of the boringest way you can make a sandwich. (laughs) And it drives, it drives me crazy when he orders it. Cause I also make fun of him like while he's ordering it. Cause he's like, I'm going to have a burger. I'm like, can you just take all the fun stuff off of it? That's the way he wants it. No cheese, no nothing. Just make it as boring as you can possibly do it. But the funny thing is, is that he's serious about it. Cause he's really picky about his food. He's picky about strong flavors. He's picky about like a lot of stuff. Well, again, I, if people haven't noticed this, I pick on my friends. I love, I love the people. But I have done this before work. He is, <laughs> he has gotten up to go to the bathroom. You know, that feeling like when you get to go to the bathroom and the food's back, when you come to the bed table, Yeah, well, I have switched my burger and put it in front of him where he thinks the order got messed up. Like, especially if like he, like this has happened a while back where not all the food was at the table yet. His burger had not come. And I put mine in front of his, and I actually told the waitress, can you just hold for a second on bringing his? <laughs> and he sat down and he was pissed. Like he was like, We're, I mean, can't they just make a simple burger and all this? And I'm watching him fire up like, Bob, calm down. It's mine. I'm like, I'm just playing with you. <laughs> like, you know, so good, man. <laughs> but like, I, again, I know that about him. I know those little quirks about him. And those are the important things that you need to pick up on. And the second one on here that I wanted to point was vacation habits because same guy, But we travel very, very, very differently. Where Sarah and I, when we travel, we like to get into the nooks and crannies of almost like being a local in whatever that country is in or whatever that city is in, more so countries when we travel to. It's like, let's get into the nooks and crannies. Everybody knows the people out there that do not travel that way. And like my friend, Bob, Bob is a resort guy for the most part, or he's going to have his own house, like, like a vacation style kind of home. But he's never going to go and get into like the very, very, very local, local, local side of the of the village, let's say. That's good to know because if I'm going to travel with him, if we're going to plan a trip, which we've done, both Sarah and I are like, we're going to have to travel a little bit differently for this one if we're going to have Bob be on board and be excited about this. I think that also helps you understand what are going to be the conversational interests when it comes to talking about vacations. Because... He may enjoy hearing about your vacation and how you guys vacation, but when you want to focus the conversation on him, you know that that's not something that is really interesting to him. So you focus on well, how was the beaches? How was the resort? How was the food? Like you focus on those things because he'll probably glow about those things. And that's how, when you know those little things, it helps you have better conversations. It seems small. Like that, what you just described, Garrett, like seems like a small thing, but I think it is a big thing when it, when it comes to having those small conversations. 
Because mm-hmm. I've got other friends that would totally want to know about how did you like integrate into the social, like the 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 village people. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. how did you do that? And where did you stay? And how did you work that out? Because what they're planning is their trip there next time. And do they want to do it the same way? Because they get excited about that stuff. It's different conversations that you can have with different people. And that's what we're talking about. Oh, yeah, absolutely. On this lifestyle section here, too. I mean, there's so many good ones here. But I'm, I want to point out, whom does the customer seem anxious to impress? Now, this is a very interesting one because when you're talking about big business, I could see that like, okay, we could figure that out. Okay. Bob's got John as the manager and I can see that he really wants to impress him or it's the CEO that he wants to impress. But when it comes to people's personal lives, these things are still there too. And then the follow-up question of that is how does he want to be, he or she want to be seen by those people? And I think that can also help you understand the relationship dynamic between the people that you are working with. Because Sometimes when you're looking at like, well, why are people out here buying homes? Are they just buying a home? I had this conversation with um, a client of mine the other day. And she was saying like, I have this person who wants to buy a house, but she can't afford in this area. And I don't even know if she really wants to buy, but culturally she is drawn to buying because that's what they do in the Brazilian culture. She's saying uh, she's getting older and like she needs to own a home. And I said, Does she really want to though? And how can we get around that? Because it seems like the customer is trying to impress other people just so that she could say, hey, look, I own this house when she loves where she's currently renting, loves the lifestyle and has a fantastic deal. It's like, okay, if we know these things and we know what's making them anxious, how do we navigate that? And how do we help them through those things so that we don't also then put them in a situation, you know, get them into a situation or say something that might upset them or make them just not feel as good. So I think these are really interesting things to understand about who do these people want to impress and let's pay attention to that. And sometimes that you might find that when you're working with people, it might be a spouse, it might be a boyfriend, it might be a girlfriend that they're working with, you know, with doing the transaction. And it's not just somebody in the deal with them, like that's going to be buying this house together with them. It might be somebody that they're really trying to impress their new spouse as mm-hmm. they buy their first home together. And it's important when you can pick that up and go, hmm, this is interesting. They're not just buying a house together. Like he, There's a real status thing going on here right now. Interesting. Yeah, absolutely. Any other big questions in this lifestyle section before we get to this awesome last section here, Garrett? Yeah, you know, there's a couple things that I mean, we could, and this is where I keep like jumping on them and going like, oh, that would be a good one. Like we could totally, because like sports and what kind of cars do people drive? Are they interested in cars? Do they care less about cars? There's so many great little pieces in there, but let, you know, let's move down to the customer and you section. Yeah. I, this is so the, the ones in here that like kill me, but it's so important because it's good for us all to know are the ones like, are they highly ethical? <laughs> <laughs> is he or she yeah. very self-centered you all you all know whose clients you like you're like oh yeah there's the, the i would put so-and-so's name on that one like i would check that box for them we, yeah. we all have those clients and people we've worked with oh but such important information to have i mean because if you're going into a negotiation with you know, whoever <laughs> i mean knowing where your seller or buyer stands on being ethical about certain things and having a quote fair negotiation. I mean, because you're there to work for them. You have a fiduciary responsibility. I mean, yes, you cannot cross ethical barriers and you can't do anything that's illegal, of course. But do you want to be put in those uncomfortable situations to then tell your buyer, like, I I just don't feel good doing that. Like, so let's know those things early on so that you can be aware of what situations you're getting yourself into. Yeah, I think it's it's preparing yourself for the situation that you might have to say I can't I can't do that, like that's not what we're going to do. Uh, where there's some people you never have to worry about that on, or at least if you say I can't do that, it might the conversation might stop there with certain people, and there's some people that might go, but why? And here's the reasons why I think we should still do it. Like that's where knowing that up front and starting to learn that about your people, you can prepare yourself up front for how you're going to be working with them. And how you, what, things that might come up. What's another one you got on here? <laughs> well, I think... Um, My favorite these, one's these, the last the question, one. I know, and I'm leaving that one for you. <laughs> <laughs> but these, these questions about key problems, and this 
if you relate this to real estate, because I think this is definitely very much designed towards big business, but this is what comes out of doing your buyer interview and your pre-listing interview and your listing consultation. However, if you're not there yet with your people, like maybe you're working this McKay 66 with people in your database who you haven't talked about real estate with yet and understanding like what are the key problems as the customer sees them, ask yourself and see if you can extrapolate from conversation. And maybe you experience this when you're in neighbors' homes or spending time with friends where they talk about little problems that might relate to real estate and put those down. And then understanding what are the priorities of this customer as it relates to real estate, taking this question, what are the priorities of the customer's management, which well, you wouldn't really, <laughs> you're not dealing with big, unless you're doing commercial real estate, to, definitely use this. But when it comes to residential, like what are the priorities for these people when it comes to their real estate? And make sure that you have that stuff identified so that when the time comes and you go through the buyer interview and the pre-listing interview and the seller consultation, you can actually match it up and say, hey, was I right about this? And was this correct? Or are they saying something that's not consistent with all of the stuff that I've been learning over the past several years? Maybe I need to talk more about this and ask more questions to create clarity. So I think that's really what you can do here and then move right into how can you help with these problems? Yeah, I agree. I agree. Can I do the last one? Oh, yeah, this one's the best one. All right. Because this, this is going to, this, by the way, is going to answer a whole lot of questions for you guys out there. Does your competitor have a better answer to the above questions than you have? Oh. So good. So think about this. Think of all the times, Matt, you've heard this so many times. I can't believe that sign went in across the street. I've been neighbors with them for five years and they should have known better and they should have come across the street and talked to me because I could have helped them with that sale. That's one. I've heard that one before. Other oh, ones that I've heard oh, is I, like, I can't believe that they went. I've, I've, they've been friends of mine. We've gone to dinner together. I've taken them out to dinner. I can't believe they went and used that other age. We were at dinner last week. Yep. They didn't mention to me that they were going to be selling. I'm personally hurt and I'm taking them off my mailing list. Oh, sorry. Well, like and my- this, go- this goes into two as a, as a quick interjection about flow. People will say, what well, Garrett, I've been in flow with these people and I've heard this before. And then I say, okay, now after hearing that, you could just point right to this question. Great. I know you're in flow with them. Is the person they're working with in better flow or do they have better answers to any of the questions on this list? Yeah. Because the answer is probably, yeah, they do actually. Yeah. If you've got better answers than your competitor on this and you are engaging with your people along these lines and using this information for yourself, it's very, very, very hard for someone to step in front of you and work with that person. Now, again... I go back to be genuine. Don't be a robot about this. Don't be like, oh my, I've got to know this piece and this piece and this piece if I want to get them as a client. But it, this is a way for you to understand that if you lose the piece of business, don't attack them. Don't shame on them. Look at you and go, how have I done at really getting to know this person? Because you can talk to some, somebody every single month. Like we have our whole thing of talk to your sphere of influence every 30 days. You can go talk to those people every 30 days and have chit chat with them, or you can go and really dive in and get to know them and, and interview them and learn this pieces of information. And I guarantee you, the more, you know, the deeper the relationship is, the more you can connect with them about and joke with them about, you know, is it menorah time or send them a picture of their favorite car that they've ever wanted, whatever it might be that's an opportunity to build that relationship deeper. But if somebody else has done this better than you, just know you might not get that piece of business. They might go that direction. And it's it's a total psychological game at that point. It's not something the client is actually thinking about. It's a very much a gut moment when they pick who they want to have help them with something. This is the connection stuff that makes them make decisions one way or the other. It's real simple. But you got to take the time. Yeah. And it takes time. I think that is the key. And you mentioned it at the beginning, Garrett, that it takes time to learn a lot of these things. But now that you're aware of these things, which, by the way, just Google McKay 66, M-A-C-K-A-Y 66, and you will find the whole list of these questions. It does take time. And I think that's the important thing is, is now that you're aware of these things, see if you can 
have conversations that help you discover the answers to these questions. Some things you'll be able to just straight up ask and some things you'll have to learn through your conversations, but just make notes of them when you do that. And you'll be able to build great profiles of your people. So, I mean, Matt, let's use ourselves as an example, me and you, because we've known each other for a, a handful of years now. Oh, yeah. We talk a lot more than the average person, like talk about being in flow with somebody like Matt and I probably talk, we probably put in a good, what, five hours a week conversation. Oh, yeah. I mean, if you, you add in, you know, podcasting and then all, everything else we're doing with business and, and that kind of stuff. Yeah. We talk a lot. We share a lot and we talk a lot. And that was the funny thing when we started going down this together, Matt was going like, I couldn't answer a lot of these questions about you. And I'm the same one with Matt. Like I couldn't go down and answer a lot of these questions. It's funny, both of us knowing this, we should be like, all right, let's just start the top, man. I'm going to answer one. You answer another one. <laughs> and let's see what happens. That's an interesting game. We should play it and see where it goes. But the, I think like certain things that I have learned about you, I mean, obviously wife, child, I know your parents live just down the street. I know that you moved from New Jersey. Like I can, I can build all these pieces together. You know, I know that you said you know, on a podcast, if anybody else was listening out there, you have a dream of having a Ford Raptor. You know, you start picking all these little pieces apart and start gathering them. I know that if I'm going to send you, and by the way, guys, don't bombard him with this because he's not a raging alcoholic. But <laughs> I know, I know that you enjoy a really good bourbon. Oh yeah, you know, and it's like he's like if I'm going to send Matt something as a gift to say thank you. Now, not all the time, but periodically, I could send a really nice bottle of bourbon, and that's going to be appreciated, and Matt will appreciate it. Matt also, I think, knows because we've joked about it. Don't ever send me a bottle of bourbon. Yep, no, not going to work. Because <laughs> it's nor, gross. <laughs> nor send Garrett a Starbucks gift card or any type I don't of do that either related products. It just doesn't work. But if you want to send Garrett some tea, yeah, you can probably send some tea. These are I'm the little things. That's yeah. the fun stuff. That's the little stuff that makes the relationships grow and blossom and grow into amazing things. And sometimes we get so focused on going to find my next real estate transaction. And I'm going to tell all you out there, this is what attracts your next 50 real estate transactions is you just taking the time to do this and it grows and it builds on itself and it's exponential. And if you've got a hundred people in your database that you have no, literally could fill this stuff out easily about all of them, you will have more business and you know what to do with besides trying to figure out where can I do my next open house? Cause I need a deal. Exactly. I mean, and it, it's more fun. It's more fun knowing a lot about people. Because you could you could just create more value for people. So guys, go check this out. Google it, McKay66, and start adding this into your processes and the things that you're paying attention to with your people because you're going you're gonna to have a blast with it. So Garrett, thank you for bringing up this one because I'm surprised we hadn't talked about it yet, but I'm happy that we got the chance to do it. Yeah, I, you know, it just kind of one of those things that came up on a coaching call the other day. I was looking at the list and my brain went, we need to we need to discuss this one. Like this is an important piece. I think a lot of people overlook, and it's not really talked about in depth like this in Ninja. Where I think a lot of people go, like, do you have like a list of forward questions I can ask? Uh, yeah, go here. Start start with this. Like <laughs> yeah, this is an interesting go. way to yeah to dive in deeper. So I'm happy, Matt. You enjoyed it. I I had a whole lot of fun with this. And uh, as always, thank you to everybody. And Matt, do you have a shout out? We do have a shout out for today. And so this is continuing our iTunes review shout outs. So if you guys want to get into iTunes and drop a little review there with your name and location, we'll give you a shout out. And today we're uh, shouting out Andrew Noor in Fremont, California. Um, I've actually had the pleasure of having a few Instagram conversations with Andrew. Great guy. And he says, um, hey, everyone, this is the best podcast I ever listened to. I am with Venture Sotheby's oh. and Ryan Seacrest is the one who introduced me to it. He is an engine instructor and has been, and it's been an honor putting these systems to use. I've only been in real estate a year and a half, and I do notice a difference from when I first started. Amazing, amazing, amazing. I have a one-year-old son and the life-work balance is real. Thanks for doing this as much as you have and blessings to you too, TSW. Thank you, Andrew. Really appreciate you, man. And uh, everything that you're doing out there. He's got some great stuff going on too and has some 
stunning properties that he shares on Instagram. So if you guys want to go check him out, give him a search. And his son is just really, really cool. Um, so he and I share that new father thing as well, which is which is great. So thanks, Andrew. Andrew, thank you so much for sharing that. And uh, thanks to everybody out there. I appreciate everybody who's listening. Again, as always, we're getting amazing feedback. And uh, again, keep doing as long as you guys enjoy it. So thank you again and uh, see you on the next one. Thank you for joining us here on the Ninja Coaching Coast to Coast podcast. We appreciate your time and attention. If you receive some value out of this episode, we would love for you to share it, subscribe to the podcast, and if you feel so compelled to leave us a review. Have an amazing day. We'll see you soon.